On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1971 and we're going to be taking a listen to Buddy Rich's views on country music. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So tonight we are doing something that I've never done before on the channel. We're going to be taking a look at the psychology of music and the way that different people think about music in general, but also about other genres of music. And we're going to be taking a look at Buddy Rich under the spotlight tonight in an interview that he did in 1971 on the Mike Douglas show. And I hadn't seen this before until a few days ago. You might have seen it, so you might have a little bit of a heads up about what he's going to say. But the reason that I want to feature this video is because it very much encapsulates the ethos of this whole channel, everything that I do, but in an opposite way. This is exactly the opposite of what I try to promote and put out there on the channel. But we'll get it up on screen and we'll watch it the whole way through the interview section where Buddy is commenting about country music and then we'll jump into some analysis afterwards. Wichita lineman. Buddy, you, you said that you, you don't like country music, so. And uh, you have some definite feelings about Absolutely. musical tastes. Absolutely. I think that it's about time that this country grew up in this musical taste, rather than making the giant step backwards that, that country music is doing. We try uh, very hard to do things like the, the moon landing and uh, our new cars and fashions and everything, all a step forward. And country music is a giant step backwards. It's so simple that anybody can sing it, anybody can do it, anybody can play it on one, uh, one string. Right on. But I think it's about time that uh, we learn that uh, there has to be a, a higher degree of musical intelligence and that we have to start listening to better things rather than the simple things. You know, our creators in jazz, uh, the only art form that this country really has produced, and people like Art Tatum and Lester Young and Charlie Parker, some of the great giants of jazz, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Benny Goodman, Count Basie, these people are giving something in music, they're giving of themselves, and yet they have Hall of Fame for uh, a baseball player or a trophy for a football player who gets smashed. And um, the line has forgotten about uh, the great jazz uh, musicians who I'm, have given I'm glad so you brought that up because not enough respect is given to Absolutely good musicians. Not. Absolutely people not. People kind of take it for granted. To consider them. People take it for granted and they're... Uh, uh, I think they should be respected because I know, watching our guys, right. they're working every minute of every day. Well, they're creative. In bettering themselves. That's what music is all about. It's, it's creativity, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you have to create too much, man, to, to be a hillbilly. I don't, you know, anybody can go and say, wham, wham, wham. Uh, listen, Buddy he's a, Rich he's a high school teacher. Buddy Rich, all the men. He's a high school teacher, right? That's right. And his brain should tell him that country music is really outside, man. It's really simple, you know. And... Uh, I think when you do a show like this, it's about time that the young people who may be viewing this thing realize that there's a lot more to music than just uh, playing one chord or two music, chords and, and uh, going out and trying to make money. Music, music, music makes various people happy in different ways. There are some people who use mi music as a kind of a tranquilizer, kind of a, you know, yeah, well, I, watch, more, I watch more Westerns. Tranquil, more, I, watch, more? I watch Westerns because it doesn't really tax my brain. Yeah, because you know who's going to win. I can go, get, go in the kitchen for five minutes and come back and get right back in. And right, isn't that simple? Yes. Well, but, I'd, rather but think, I, you know, I'd rather think that Mannix can't make it on Friday night or Saturday night. You know, I'd rather think that he's being chased and can't win. It gives you something to think about. How's he going to get away? Or Mission Impossible. You know, although you know they're going to win, I don't know how they're going to win. And it gives me something to think about. Mm -hmm. And the same thing applies to music. You know, if I'm going to sit and listen to uh, you sing, and I'm going to listen to Frank and Tony Bennett, I know that there's enough emotion there to carry me through whatever period of emotion I'm going through. That's great company but, you uh, just put me in, pal. You Thank know, you. if I have to listen to Glenn Campbell, man, that's like the cowboy Wayne Newton, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> It's interesting that as the uh, budgets for schools uh, become more and more difficult, that they, they're dropping music from some of the curriculum. That's in unfortunate. The that, that hurts. That's and that's tragic. Very because unfortunate. They, that is the beginnings of a, of a, a familiarity with the language of music. Now, I'll tell you something very, very interesting, Mike, if we have time. We just played a couple of high schools for some young, very young people. We played in Glassboro, and we played in Western Massachusetts, a high school in Western Massachusetts, where they have a jazz orchestra for young people. And we did a concert there a week ago Friday, and the average age was about 17, nobody much older than 19 in the audience. 
And we have a couple of rock charts in the band that we played. And as soon as we started to play that, we lost them. As soon as we got into the jazz thing that the band is uh, hey, known for, you know, the kids were just hysterical. It was one of the great nights the band's ever had. And the same thing applied when we were in Europe. The whole attitude in Europe is the jazz thing. You know, they've got some excellent jazz musicians. England has one of the greatest bands. The band that plays behind Tom Jones is, is one of the, the great bands of all time. <laughs> That's you right. Know? So that um, there must be something said about the art form of jazz, you know, and we, we tend to uh, not relate to the jazz thing. We like to think that the uh, real American music is the cowboy sitting on top of the horse with one leg over the saddle, singing, uh, you know, show me your home uh, with a buffalo well, room and I'll show you a dirty house, you know. You know what, I mean? <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you say about a Chet Atkins who plays, uh, and you listen to him with the Boston Pops, or that kind of thing? You say well, what I, what I try to do is listen to the Boston Pops and reject Chet Atkins. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, really. No, I think he's really. Listen, I think Chet Atkins is a virtuoso. He's a virtuoso, if, unless you've heard guys like Charlie Christians. And when you've heard, heard Charlie, Charlie Christians, Christians, then you can't relate to, to Atkins. Well, you know, buddy, every, it's, it's like that other guy. Now, you're getting into styles hold now. It, hold it, I'm the guest. Uh, <laughs> when you hear Boots Randolph, right? Yes. And you hear him play that funny thing that he plays, you know, Yakety Sax, which was like on the top ten for uh, an hour and a half. How do you listen to him and uh, with the same ears try to listen to Lester Young or listen to Charlie Parker? You cannot do it, man, because the variance in the musical taste and the articulation and the ability and the heart and the time that went into to be a master like Lester Young was and left a mark for people like Stan Getz to follow. These people should be thought about, not these cowboys, man. But many of us don't have the education, the music education You don't need, a, music, you don't need a musical that. education, man. You need some ears and you need some time to think about what people are producing. You know, it's like going to see a, a skin flake and a story like Love Story. There's a great difference, but they're both on the market. Now, it's a, a, up to you, with a man with taste, to be able to discern which picture is the most uh, valid, the one that you think can give you the most. Do you me know? a favor, buddy. Do, uh -huh. some, do some of your You're music mad at for me us. Now, right? No, uh, I'm not. Uh, I want you to play. I don't want you oh. to talk through your whole Listen, number. Can we, you got a cowboy <laughs> chart? <laughs> I still like that. What you? And there we have it. So we are going to be going back and analyzing a few things that Buddy says here, but I find this really interesting, the psychology of music. I studied sports psychology at university. My sister has a degree in psychology, so it's probably something that genetically I'm destined to find interesting. But the reason that this really stands out is because of Buddy Rich and the fact that he was such an amazing musician and drummer in his own right. So his views just stand above everybody else's because of the fact that he is up there on that pedestal of being such an amazing musician. And this is by no way a reflection on his ability as a drummer. And it's really just going to be looking into his view of other genres and how he has respect for jazz and might not have the same respect for other genres. I think it's the fact that because Buddy had such a passion for jazz, that's how he reached those levels of playing that ability because it really was an obsession. He was so into it. And when you have that kind of dedication to a particular style of playing, then you've got all the chance in the world of mastering it because it really is an obsession. So as you guys know on this channel, if you've watched for any length of time, I view lots of different styles, genres of music, lots of different artists, singer songwriters, bands, and we always start with a level playing field and a blank sheet. So it means that when we're looking at a performance, we can point out techniques and stylizations vocally. If we're looking at a singer, if we're looking at a guitarist, we can break down their techniques on the fretboard. We can start to appreciate what they're doing without the prerequisite of already liking the particular genre we're listening to. We can just jump into what we are given in terms of their artistry. And this is the first thing to point out that music is an art and it's a language. So, Every band and artist who create music are communicating with an audience. So it's just how well they communicate and 
how well they affect that audience, whether they can get their message across, and there will be particular bands and artists that speak to a cross-section of the population, and they will really take that message to heart. It doesn't have to be a particular genre, it can be any type of music, but some people connect with a particular style of music, and that's just the way it is. It's an art form, it's a language, it's not about how complex you make the music and it's not a competition. This is the main thing that I want to underline in this video that I think Buddy Rich very much views music as a competition and something that you have to earn your stripes in music. You have to learn enough about it or be able to do particular things well in order to be seen as good or better than other genres of music, other musicians and as you guys all know, watching this channel, there is no better in art. You can't be better because there's nothing factual. You can't score a band or artist out of 10 because there's no way that you can equate how good or how well you affected somebody emotionally and whether they connected with your music or not. Of course, if it was the case that the more complex the progression you use, the more chords you use, the more notes you used, meant that you were better, then that means there would be a champion of music and that champion would have used the most chords in a song and they would have used the most notes in a song as well. But there is no champion of music and if there were, they would then be superseded by the person who then used another chord and therefore took the championship because they used 30 chords rather than 29 who was the previous champion. So we all know that it's an art form. It's not the case that if you use lots of chords and use lots of notes, then you are now better than somebody who used fewer notes and used fewer chords. In fact, there are a lot of musicians out there who connect to such a wide audience with very few chords and very few notes. So you could argue that the opposite is true. Even by making that argument, you can sense that music is an art form and it's exactly the same as a painter with a brush. They might use lots of colors. They might use very few colors. They might paint really realistically or be more impressionist in style. It's all about the person looking at it and what they think of that picture. And that is subjective whether somebody will like it, whether it speaks to them or not. And this is the thing about music. You cannot say that somebody else's opinion is wrong because it's an opinion. If they like that music, they like that music. It doesn't make their opinion wrong. All you can do in this world is base your opinions on facts. And the more facts you base those opinions on, probably the more opinions start to fall in line because they're all basing them on the facts that you are given. And facts don't change. They are the same from one person to the next, if you tell a fact to a person, that fact is not going to change when you tell it to another person. It's still the same fact. Whereas an opinion is going to change from one person to the next. Something that I have learned during my time on this earth is that whatever you believe, whatever you're interested in, there'll be somebody else in the world who believes the exact opposite and is interested in the exact opposite to what you might be interested in. So they will also believe just as strongly in the opposite to the thing that you believe in. It's just the nature of the world. That's why the world is so diverse because everyone is into something else. And I think that it's something that Buddy doesn't necessarily understand in this interview is that somebody who's really into country music, they will be into country music just as much as he is into jazz. They will have just the same passion, just the same interest, at exactly the same level that he has for jazz. And it's that maybe lack of empathy, lack of understanding that his emotion is the same as the other person's emotion. It's just that they're into something different. There is no way that you can split two people's beliefs when they believe the opposite. All you can do is have a clean slate and accept that and now try and get into the understanding of why. When people are listening to other genres of music, they're not listening to that and faking the enjoyment of it. If it isn't jazz, if they're listening to country music or rock and roll or hard rock or metal or heavy metal, it doesn't matter. They're not faking the enjoyment. They're not just trying to have everybody on saying, oh, I don't really like this, but I'm going to pretend I'm enjoying it. It is speaking to them. They get something out of it. 
and this is why I feature so many diverse <laughs> genres on the channel is because it just speaks to different people that's why there are so many suggestions so many requests from different genres because everybody is different of course I'm gonna be leaving the comment section open as always with all of my videos I know that other videos on YouTube that have shown this particular interview have turned off the comment section because of people I'm sure either disagreeing with Buddy or agreeing with him and maybe there being arguments in the comment section I don't know but we are really viewing this not looking at Buddy Rich's ability at playing the drums I've already covered that but the wider view of looking at music and looking at music with a level playing field with no preconceptions of what to expect and no prejudgments really uh, listening without prejudice so we are going to just jump into sections of the video to hear what Buddy has to say and also analyze what he's saying Buddy, you, you said that you you don't like country music, so, and uh, you have some definite feelings about absolutely. musical tastes. Absolutely. absolutely, I think that it's about time that this country grew up in this musical taste, rather than making the giant step backwards that that country music is doing. We try uh, very hard to do things like the the moon landing, and uh, our new cars and fashions and everything, all a step forward. And country music is a giant step backwards. It's so simple that anybody can sing it, anybody can do it, anybody can play it on one uh, one string. Right on. But I think it's about time that uh, we learn that uh, there has to be a, a higher degree of musical intelligence and that we have to start listening to better things. Rather so I'm just going to jump in there and you can hear that we've got maybe two or three people in the audience who are agreeing and applauding and this is the point that everybody's different he will have people that agree with him you get other people that disagree so the first thing that Buddy says really is that he thinks people need to grow up with their musical taste and already that's putting country music which they're referring to here as something childlike and adolescent and not adult in terms of making jazz something that you then grow up and it's more sophisticated so he's already putting country music down in the way that he's talking so you can tell that in his mind he doesn't see it as a valid art form or a valid musical genre because it is easy so he's attributing complexity to quality or being better that's how he judges mu things musically he's not judging it on making a connection he's judging how complex the music is therefore it is better if it's more simplified then it is worse he also then mentions about the country moving forward and sending a spaceship to the moon and all of that kind of stuff and just taking that analogy, you could say, well, once you've sent a rocket to the moon, what if somebody wants to just take their own personal plane around on a weekend because they enjoy doing that? It's not got the technology that you get on a rocket ship and they do that on the weekend just for fun. There's every argument for saying that in music you can listen to other genres because you listen to that for fun. You don't want the complexity that you would have the equivalent of going to the moon. You just want to fly around to enjoy yourself and you don't even go anywhere. You just go up in the air, you fly around and lots of people do that. They get their pilot's license at the weekend. They'll go out and with their friend or their teacher who's teaching them how to fly. They literally go around in circles and then land again, but they enjoy it. And that's the point. It's all about enjoyment. It's not always about doing something to try and push the boundaries all the time. I'm just going to play something that Buddy says here that really does qualify the fact that he sees music as something that is a measurable form and it is effectively a competition that you can be better if you play a particular way. But I think it's about time that uh, we learn that uh, there has to be a, a higher degree of musical intelligence and that we have to start listening to better things rather than the simple things. And there we have it. So he's saying that there has to be a higher musical intelligence and we need to start listening to better things rather than the simple things. So you say, well, what is better? Better is subjective. I could say that the hard rock music that I love is better than jazz. But that doesn't mean anything. You can't quantify how good music is compared to other music because it's an art form. But it's a fascinating insight into how Buddy equates in his head 
the quality of music and how it stacks up with other music. He thinks that music is all about intelligence and ele elevating your intelligence to appreciate music that might be more complex and therefore is better. Let's roll on with the interview. You know, our creators in jazz, uh, the only art form that this country really has produced, and people like Art Tatum and Lester Young and Charlie Parker, some of the great giants of jazz, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Benny Goodman, Count Basie, these people are giving something in music, they're giving of themselves, and yet they have Hall of Fame for uh, a baseball player or a trophy for a football player who gets smashed, and... Um, the line has forgotten about uh, the great jazz uh, musicians who have I'm given I'm glad so much. you brought that up because not enough respect is given to Absolutely good musicians. Not. Absolutely. And just taking that statement there, Buddy is talking about those great jazz musicians and the amount of work they put in, the effort they put in, they dedicated their life to being the best at what they did. And you can say that for every single musician who, especially in the 60s and the 70s, we're talking about times when you couldn't fake being great and being very popular, connecting with a lot of people in every sense of the word, emotionally, musically. You couldn't use autotune back in the, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the jazz musicians from the 30s and the 40s going even earlier they had to be great. They had to have great technique in exactly the same way the country players in the 50s, 60s, 70s had to have great technique as well because technology didn't exist where you could fake it. It's also interesting that Buddy is referring to these greats of jazz and the fact that they're not recognized. I think it's something that is certainly a sore point in this interview and with him in his life that the jazz musicians that he grew up with, listening to and performed with didn't get the respect of maybe other artists that he thought were inferior to the music that he was playing and the music that he was sharing with these people that he looked up to. Again, it's something that you could say on one level could be a jealousy of other people getting the limelight, getting lots of accolades, but these musicians that he loved not getting the accolades. And music is not something that is fair. <laughs> Life isn't fair, but music is not going to give the best musician all of the attention and all of the money, all of the fame. You're not going to get lots of awards. Generally, across the board, you'll find fantastic musicians who might not even be that well known. But they are fantastic musicians. They might not even be professional musicians. They just do it in their time off work. But they are fantastic players, fantastic writers, fantastic singers. But this is the thing about art and the thing about music that you don't automatically get what you deserve. And that is the same with life. I think it's very important to not be bitter about somebody else's success, the things that they're achieving. The only thing as a musician, as a true artist that you focus on is your own music, your own self. You don't worry about what other people are achieving. You just try to get your point across to your audience. And it might be the case that your audience is 100 people, 200 people, maybe 300 people. But that should be enough. And it's why on the channel, when we're looking at true artists, I always make a point of mentioning that. When you're looking at someone who's a singer-songwriter and they don't have a huge following, but they have stayed true to themselves throughout their career and they might not be household names, but they are true artists and they're not looking at everybody else getting jealous. They're just focusing on their own art form and they are connecting to their audience. And for a true artist, that is all that matters. So let's roll it on a little bit more. People kind of take it for people granted. Consider them. People take it for granted and they're, uh... Uh, I think they should be respected because I know, watching our guys, right. they're working every minute of every day. Well, they're creative. In and that's, themselves. That's what music is all about. It's, it's creativity, you know. And I don't think you have to create too much, man, to, to be a hillbilly. I don't, you know, anybody can go and say, wham, wham, wham. Uh, listen, Buddy he's a, he's Rich a high school teacher. Of Buddy Rich, all the men. He's a high school teacher, right? That's right. And his brain should tell him that country music is really outside, man. It's really simple, you know. And... Uh, I think when you do a show like this, it's about time that the young people who may be viewing this thing realize that there's a lot more to music than just uh, playing one chord or two chords. And, and, and that's again really interesting that he said 
this guy's a teacher, he should know that <laughs> the music that Buddy Rich is into is better than other music. So almost like education, intelligence, means that you can tell what is good and what isn't. And that just isn't the case with art. <sighs> You're into what you're into, and that is it. That's the fundamental. Imagine being really well-educated. There's plenty of really well-educated people that are into hard rock, that are into country music, that are into different genres other than jazz, and they're not into jazz. And it's almost like saying, when you can figure out what's going on with jazz music, when you've got that intelligence, then you have to like it. And there are also plenty of people who are into jazz music. They understand what's going on. They understand the progressions and the way that the musicians are interacting with each other, the extemporization you get in jazz, but they're still not into jazz music. They still don't listen to it. I can appreciate the technicalities and the ability that is found in jazz music but I like hard rock music. I like listening to 80s rock. It's not something that I'm faking an interest in. It's just what speaks to me. Let's keep going. And um, going out and trying but to make a million music, dollars. Music, music makes various people happy in different ways. There are some people who use music as a kind of a tranquilizer, kind of a, you know, yeah, well, I, watch, more, I watch Western. I love the way as well that Mike here, Mike Douglas, is trying to explain to Buddy how everybody's different. I don't think that the point really gets across to Buddy. It is very difficult to put across another point of view or for somebody to put across that point of view and for the other person to understand it when the other person is very close-minded or very into their beliefs. They can't accept anybody else's point of view because they're so into what they are into. Whereas, again, that blanket statement, whatever you are into, whatever you believe, somebody else will be just as strongly into the opposite. But let's get back into it again. Thank you. What's more, I, watch, more? I watch Westerns because it doesn't really tax my brain. Yeah, because you know who's going to win. I can go, get, go in the kitchen for five minutes and go back and get right back in. And right, isn't that simple? Yes. Well, but, I'd, rather but, but think, I, you know, I'd rather think that Mannix can't make it on Friday night or Saturday night. You know, I'd rather think that he's being chased and can't win. It gives you something to think about. How is he going to get away? Or Mission Impossible. You know, although you know they're going to win, I don't know how they're going to win. And it gives me something to think about. Mm -hmm. And the same thing applies to music. You know, if I'm going to sit and listen to uh, you sing, and I'm going to listen to Frank and Tony Bennett, I know that there's enough emotion there to carry me through whatever period of emotion I'm going through. It's great company but, you uh, just put me in, pal. You Thank know, you. if I have to listen to Glenn Campbell, man, that's like the cowboy Wayne Newton, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, uh, it's interesting that as the... Uh... <laughs> I think that was the point at which... Buddy dropped a bit of a hammer there, and you guys know, having seen uh, Glenn Campbell on the channel quite a lot with not only his vocal ability, but his musical ability. And this is where Buddy Rich, I'm sure, probably didn't know a lot about Glenn Campbell when he did this interview. He probably hadn't seen him play the guitar or knew that he was part of the Wrecking Crew. Glenn Campbell was actually part of the people in the studio and it was amongst the jazz musicians who were in the wrecking crew that was their background and glenn campbell couldn't read or write music but he kept up with the level of the jazz musicians in the studio so i think that's where buddy maybe goes a little bit wrong here not having any background on the person that you're talking about and i know that he just relates it to glenn campbell's voice but to not know about Glenn Campbell's background and to make that statement. That is the problem. Of course, his opinion of Glenn Campbell's voice is entirely valid. That is his opinion. But let's get back into it. Yeah, budgets for schools become more and more difficult. That they, They're dropping music from some of the curriculum. That's unfortunate. In that, that hurts. That's and unfortunate. that's tragic. Because Very unfortunate. Th that is the beginnings of a, of a, a familiarity with the language of music. You can tell here that things are getting a little bit uncomfortable and there was a bit of an attempt there to change the focus. But let's get back into it. I'll tell you something very, very interesting, Mike, if we have time. We just played a couple of high schools for some young, very young people. We played in Glassboro and we played in Western Massachusetts, a high school in Western Massachusetts, where they have a jazz orchestra for young people. And we did a concert there a week ago Friday and the average age was about 17. Nobody much older than 19 in the audience. 
And we have a couple of rock charts in the band that we played. And as soon as we started to play that, we lost them. As soon as we got into the jazz thing that the band is uh, hey, known for, you know, the kids were just hysterical. It was one of the great nights that the band's ever had. And the same thing applied when we were in Europe. The whole attitude... So, really interesting story there because Buddy is actually backing up his argument but in the negative way because he's saying that we went to a school and there were kids that were not a lot older than 17 and it was a school that had a jazz orchestra. So, the school is into jazz, evidently, and he's saying we went there, we played a couple of rock songs and they just weren't feeling it. But as soon as we started playing jazz, they loved it. They were hysterical. And that is the case for any genre. If you go to a hard rock or a heavy metal gig and they start playing jazz, the audience aren't going to like it. As soon as they start playing hard rock, heavy metal, the audience is going to be hysterical because they love it. So all he's saying there is that when you preach to the converted, you're going to be popular. And he's somehow thinking that by playing jazz to a jazz crowd, that means that people like jazz and connect more with jazz than rock music. That's not the case. When Elvis performed rock and roll, the crowd were pretty hysterical. Let's get back into it. In Europe, there's the jazz thing. You know, they've got some excellent jazz musicians. England has one of the greatest bands. The band that plays behind Tom Jones is it's one of the, the great end. bands of all time. That's yeah. right. So that... Um, there must be something said about the art form of jazz, you know, and we, we tend to uh, not relate to the jazz thing. We like to think that the uh, real American music is the cowboy sitting on top of the horse with one leg over the saddle, singing, uh, you know, show me a home uh, with a buffalo well, roam and I'll show you a dirty house, you know. You know I mean, what, do you, what, what do you say about a Chet Atkins who plays, uh, and you listen to him with the Boston Pops or that kind of thing? You say, well, what I, what I try to do is listen to the Boston Pops and reject Chet Atkins. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, really. No, I think, he's really? Oh. Listen, I think Chet Atkins is a virtuoso. He's a virtuoso, if, unless you've heard guys like Charlie Christians. And when you've heard, heard Charlie, Charlie Christians, Christians, then you can't relate to, to Atkins. Well, you know, funny. It's, it's, a, it's like that other no, cat. You, no, uh, you're getting into it? styles hold now. It. Hold it, I'm the guest. <laughs> uh, and again, really interesting there that when they bring up Chet Atkins and... Um, I mean, maybe it could have been the case that if Buddy Rich had heard Glenn Campbell, that he would totally write him off as a guitarist. That could well have happened. But when you're talking about guitarists and whether you like them or you don't like them, Buddy Rich is saying that once you've heard, or once he's heard, a guitarist that he thinks is great, he can't listen to any other guitarist because he's now got a favorite. And that's normal that everyone has their favorite guitarists, but that doesn't mean that the guitarists that you don't favor aren't any good. The other guitarists will have just as many fans as the guitarists that you like. And it's a case of trying to level that playing field and take all of your bias out of the equation and not discount another guitarist because you've got a favorite. It is almost like looking at other guitarists with rose tinted glasses and they can do no wrong. And guitarists that aren't these guitarists aren't as good because I've heard these ones and they're the best and I think they're the best. That's my opinion. And therefore my opinion is fact which it actually isn't, it's just an opinion. I think we're getting towards the end here, but let's just keep it going. <laughs> when you hear Boots Randolph, right? Yes. And you hear him play that funny thing that he plays, you know, Yakety Sax, which was like on the top 10 for uh, an hour and a half. How do you listen to him and uh, with the same ears, try to listen to Lester Young or listen to Charlie Parker? You cannot do it, man, because the variance in the musical taste and the articulation and the ability and the heart and the time that went into to be a master like Lester Young was, and left a mark for people like Stan Getz to follow. These people should be thought about, not these cowboys, man. And there we have it. Again, another declaration of the amount of time and effort and heart that the players that Buddy likes put into mastering their craft. That is exactly the same for every other genre. Like I said, you can't fake it. So it's very much that view of having almost tunnel vision that what you're into and all the people that you like, they did everything in their power and sacrificed so much to get where they are. Everybody else didn't do anything, but they get all the accolades and they sell millions and millions of records. Glenn Campbell, for example, when you're talking about him, 
being a multi-million selling artist and having the ability that he had on the fretboard, he dedicated his life in exactly the same way that jazz musicians dedicated their lives. Let's get back into it again. But because many of us don't have the education and music education. You don't need a music. You don't need a musical that. education, man. You need some ears and you need some time to think about what people are producing. You know, it's like going to see a, a skin flake and a story like Love Story. There's a great difference, but they're both on the market now. It's a, a, up to you, with a man with taste, to be able to discern which picture is the most uh, valid, the one that you think can give you the most. Do you me know? a favor, buddy. Do uh -huh. some. Do some of your You're music. Mad. And there we have it. So. Again, Buddy is saying it's down to you to get some ears and be able to tell what is effectively better. That's what he's trying to say. Not what kind of music you're personally into and speaks to you. You've got to try and equate which music style is better. And then once you've found that, you've got to like it. That's what you've got to give your attention. It's also interesting in the way that Buddy compares the genres of country music or basically any other genre that isn't jazz with movies and one being love story and the other being a skin flick, which I think means like an X-rated movie. So, again, a bit of a derogatory term or movie to compare other genres to, but I think that's how Buddy sees it, that jazz is up here and that any other genres are lots lower down and not worth people's time. I think that's really what this comes down to, is that Buddy sees his jazz genre and his love for jazz is taking a real hit because he loves this art form of jazz as he describes it, but it's not getting the recognition that he wants it to. And that's why he's annoyed because he thinks that other genres are getting more attention than jazz, but jazz is better than all of the other genres. And I think that's where he is very defensive and very just single-minded in his love for jazz. But equally, that's how he mastered the drum kit because of his dedication and his love of jazz, he wanted to be as good a drummer as he could be to express himself through the medium of jazz. But this is one of those videos that's probably gone on for years. I feel like I've been talking for ages and I probably have, but it really signifies the love that Buddy Rich has for jazz. And it does signify the maybe lack of appreciation he has for other genres, but that is his tastes, his opinions. That's absolutely fine because those are valid to him. And I think also it's because it's the perfect representation of the opposite of what I'm trying to do on the channel here, looking at videos that have multiple genres and try and learn as much as we can from lots of different styles of music and hopefully educate you guys, any people watching these videos as to what we can take away from different artists, different singer songwriters that perform in different genres, different styles, different techniques on the guitar. There is so much to be learned from the world of music. So it's great to listen to all of it and just learn what you can from it. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you have stayed with it this long, I do appreciate it. And please don't argue in the comments section. This is all about just taking on somebody's point of view and trying to understand why he has that point of view. And I think hopefully we have that is just set in a real love for a particular genre. So thank you guys for watching and keep those suggestions for future analysis videos in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.